Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Percent Problems. This is part one. You might say, wait a minute, haven't we already been doing percent problems? Well, yes, but these problems are a little bit more complex. Very important for you to solve these kinds of problems because I guarantee you will have to learn how to do them. And really they're not hard at all once you know how to do it. So let's tackle our first problem. Let me ask you the following thing. Uh, it goes like this. The number six is what uh, percent of the number 12? Six is what percent of the number 12? Now, before we actually calculate this, I want you to think about it, to think about what it's asking you. Six, the number six is what percent of the number 12? Well, if you compare six and 12, six is exactly half of 12. So it makes sense that the answer to this question is that six has to be 50% of 12. So when it says six is what percent of 12, the answer I'm calculating is what is the percentage? of six as it relates to 12. And that percentage has to be 50%, because remember, 0% is nothing, and 100% is the whole thing, but halfway, 50% is half. And since we know that six is half of 12, then it has to be 50% of 12. So you're trying to back calculate what percentage the number is compared to the other number. Now that's thinking about things, but in order to set it up, we have to, to do it mathematically. Well, let's write down what this statement is telling us. Six is what percent of 12? What we're saying is six as compared to 12, you write that as a ratio. Six as it compares to 12, that's a ratio, is equal to some percentage. What does it mean to be a percentage? A percentage is how much of something compared to 100, right? Because that's what percent means. 50% is 50 out of 100 or 50 over 100. 10% is 10 over 100. 5% is 5 over 100. Here we're trying to figure out what is the percent, so we're gonna call it X, an unknown over 100. This is what we have to solve. Doesn't this look like a proportion? We already learned how to solve proportions before. I taught you over several lessons, four lessons actually, how to solve these kinds of problems. And now you're learning one reason why we did that, because we now know how to solve these things and they allow us to solve percent problems. So what we're saying is six as it relates and compares to 12 as a ratio is exactly equal as a ratio to some number out of 100. And when I figure out what X is, then it's out of 100. That means it has to be the same as the percentage because a percentage is always out of 100. All right, so let's rewrite what we have first. Six out of 12 is X out of 100, all right? What do we do? Well, we want to get x by itself. Now, we could just multiply by both sides by 100. That would kill the 100 uh, that's here in, uh, on the bottom because it would cancel there. But let's think a little further. 6 out of 12, we can already simplify this fraction. You see, any numbers that you can simplify or any fractions you can simplify ahead of time is going to make all of the calculations easier. So I always want you to try to do that. I can divide the top and bottom both by 6. And I'll do that, I'll strike through and say six divided by six is one and 12 divided by six is two. So what I really have is kind of like a new related problem where the new numbers are one out of two is X out of 100. This is exactly the same as this because six twelfths is exactly the same thing as one half. It's just a different, it's the same ratio in other words. Six twelfths is the same ratio as one half so replacing it with one half doesn't change anything. I'm just saying these ratios are the same. So next we can solve by doing what? We're gonna multiply by 100 and if we do it to that side, we have to multiply this side by 100. Why are we doing that? Because now that we have 100 on the top, because don't forget, this is like 100 over 1 here, and this is 100 over 1 here. 100 on the top and 100 on the bottom, I can strike through. And so the only thing that's going to be left on the right-hand side is just x. We're trying to get x by itself. On the left, you'll have 100 times 1, which is 100, and then you'll have 2 times 1, which is 2. And then x, flipping it all around, would be 100 divided by 2, which would be 50. x would be 50. So that means that 50% is the answer.
That's what I want you to circle. X is equal to 50. Yeah, that's what we that's what we calculated. But don't forget, what we're trying to figure out is what is the percentage. And what we figured out is that since X is 50, 50 is what goes in this spot. 50 is the only number that works. And so we're saying the ratio 6 twelfths is the same ratio as something out of 100. And this unknown number came out to be 50. And since it's 50 out of 100, that means it's 50%. So that's what we're going to do for every problem. We're going to set up a proportion, we're going to solve it, and then the answer we get will be the percentage. That is exactly what we're going to do for every one of these problems. And it makes sense because we know that 6 has to be 50% of 12 because it's half of 12. That's, that's how we know that. All right, next problem. And also, i just point out one more thing here. When we were at this point, we could have just multiplied by 100 here and gone through all of the math and we would still get the same answer. But by pre-simplifying this fraction, the numbers were much easier to work with. That's the only reason that you like to do that step. So let's take a look. 7 is what percent of uh, 28? All right, 7 is what percent of 28? What we're saying is the ratio 7 as it compares to 28 is equal to some unknown number out of 100. Because 7 is what percent of 28? It means 7 as it compares to 28 as a ratio is equal to some unknown number out of 100. And whatever this unknown number is will be the percentage. So let's rewrite what we have. 7, 28, x, 100. Now we see a 7 and a 28. We don't have to pre-simplify. We could just multiply by 100 to get rid of the 100 and solve. But we'll have large numbers to deal with. So instead, let's recognize I can divide top and bottom by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 28 divided by 7 is 4. And now I have a new kind of related problem, which is 1 over 4 is equal to x over 100, like this. And now that we have already done this pre-simplification, this proportion is much, much easier to solve. So to get x by itself, we're dividing by 100. We'll do the opposite, which is multiplying by 100. In fact, we're going to be doing this for every problem, basically multiplying by 100. And you can see that don't forget it's 100 over 1 and it's 100 over 1. I think we can kind of like, we don't have to write the over 1 every single time. You can see that the 100 will cancel with the 100 over on that side. So on the right, you will have an x. And on the left, 100 times 1 in the numerator will be 100. And this will be a 4 times, don't forget this is like an invisible over 1 here. So 4 times 1 is 4. And so x will be, what's 100 divided by 4? 25. X will be 25, and that means the answer is 25%, because X, this number here, is 25, and 25 out of 100 is 25%. So what it means is if you took 25% of this, then the answer is going to be 7, and it makes sense, because you know that 7 times 4 is 28. So that means that to make 28, you can do 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7. There's four groups of 7, because 7 times 4 is 28. So 25%. Of, of, of that would be to take one group out, which would be uh, seven. So if we took this and divided it into four equal groups, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, one of those groups will be seven because seven times four is 28. So seven is 25% of 20. In other words, it's a quarter of that, right? Half of this would be 50%, which would be 14. And so half again of that would be seven. All right, let's take a look at problem three. Problem three, 36 is what uh, percent of 48? 36 is what percent of 48? We're comparing the numbers 36 and 48. So 36, as it compares to and relates to as a ratio with 48, is equal to, we're looking for a percent, something over 100. All of them will basically be the same form like this. And I'm using x everywhere, but you can use a or b or d. It doesn't matter. I don't care what variable you use. Now let's rewrite what we have. 36, 48, x, and 100. We could multiply by 100, but notice how large the numbers are. We would have a lot of large numbers over there. So instead of doing that, let's just kind of pre-simplify. Right? We know we can divide the top and bottom. We can divide by 2. That would help. But if we think bigger, we can divide by 12. Because we can divide this by 12 and get a 3. We can divide this by 12 and get a 4. Because 3 times 12 is 36. And 4 times 12 is 48. And now the problem is like much simpler to deal with. Because over here on the left, I just have 3 out of 4. And then x out of 100. So you don't have to do that step. But it does make it a lot easier. 
Here we're dividing by 100, so we'll do the opposite, multiply by 100, and we'll do it to both sides, obviously, to keep it balanced. And this 100 is like 100 over 1. It'll cancel because it's on the top. and It'll cancel with this guy. And then what do we get? On the right-hand side, just x by itself. That's what we want. Here on the top, 100 times 3 is 300. And then 4 times the invisible one here is a 4. So we have 300 divided by 4. All right. Maybe you're not sure what the answer to that is, so just come down here and say, what is 300 divided by 4? So 4 times what? 7 is 28. And then the difference there is 2. Drag down another 0. And then 4 times 5 is 20. And then now the remainder is 0. So the answer came out to 75. So we found out that uh, x is equal to 75 which means that the answer in a percentage is 75% because it was x over 100. So what we figured out is 36 is actually 75% of the number 48. It makes sense because half of this would be 50%. We're calculating way more than half. 36 is more than halfway there. So that does make sense for the answer. All right, let's calculate the next one here. Let's take a look, 12 is what percent of 20? 12 is what percent of 20? Right? So when we translate, basically what we're saying is the number 12, as compared to with a ratio of 20, because we're comparing 12 to 20, is equal to x over 100. Right? So let's rewrite 12, 20, x, and 100. Now we can simplify. We can pre-simplify. We know we can divide these guys by 2. We also know we can divide by, let's see, 4. We can divide by 4, right? Because 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. So we have a 3 and a 5 right there. And let's rewrite the problem. On the left, we're just going to have 3 fifths. On the right, x over 100. And just like every single one of these problems, we can multiply by 100 to get this by itself and multiply this by 100 like this. So this 100 cancels with this one. They divide away. And on the right-hand side, all you're going to have is just x by itself. Here on the top, 100 times 3 will be 300. And the 5 times the invisible 1, because this is a fraction over 1, is just 5. right? And so if, uh, uh, if 30 divided by 5 is 6, then 300 divided by 5 has to be 60. You could do the long division to prove that to yourself, but since you have 60, the answer is 60%. The answer is 60%. So what we figured out is 12 is 60% of 20. Does it make sense? Well, 20, exactly half of it, 50% would be 10. But we're, we're not. We said it was 60%, so it has to be more than 10, So and 12 is more than 10. So it makes sense that 12 would be more than 50% of this, because 50% would be 10. And that, of course, 12 is bigger than 10. All right, I think we're only going to do a couple more. Let's squeeze one in here and then one on the other board, and I think we'll just call it a day. Five is what percent uh, of 50? Right? So what we're asking is we're comparing five and 50. We'll say five, as it compares to with a ratio of, with 50, is some number over 100. We're trying to find the percentage. So let's rewrite 5, 50, x, 100. All right, so we can pre-simplify here. Divide by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 50 divided by 5, 10. And so when we rewrite, we're going to have 1 tenth on the left, x over 100 on the right. And I can get x by itself. I'm dividing by 100, so I'll do the opposite, multiply by 100. And I have to do the same thing to both sides, multiply by 100 to make it uh, equivalent. Now, on the left-hand side, I have 100 times 1, which is 100. And then 10 times the invisible 1, because this is like over 1, is a 10. And on the right, these cancel, which just leaves me with x. And so x is going to be equal to divide 100 by 10 is 10 which means it's 10%, because x over 100, right, it's 10%. So what we figured out is that when we're comparing 5 to 50, it's exactly 10% of 50, right, 10% of 50. And that's the final answer. All right, we have one more 
on this one, and I think we're going to call it a day. Let's just go ahead and solve it. I guess we'll just solve it like over here. Let's say 30 is what percent of 200? 30 is what percent of 200? What we're saying is that 30, as it compares to 200, is equal to some unknown number as it compares to 100, right? So let's rewrite 30 over 200 x 100. I'm rewriting so I don't slash through all of my original stuff. So I can simplify these, right? Because I can divide top and bottom by 10. 30 divided by 10 is 3, and 200 divided by 10 is 20. So I'm dividing top and bottom by 10. So let's rewrite the problem. And we're going to have over here, we're only going to have 3 out of 20, or 3 over 20, x 100. So I multiply on the right-hand side by 100 to kill it down here. And I have to do the same thing over here, multiply by 100. So on the left-hand side, 100 times 3 is 300. And then 20 times the 1 here, invisible, is right down here. And then these hundreds cancel, and you have x on the right. All right? Now, we have to take 300 and divide by uh, 20. We can cancel the trailing 0, so it's really 30 divided by 2. And we can say x is equal to 15. 30 divided by 2 is 15, so we say 15%. And what we have figured out is 30 is 15% of 200. Makes sense, because 50% um, of this, 50, 50, 50, 50% would be 100. So 15% is way less than 100, and so 30 is way less than 100. And so 30 would make sense to be about 15% of that. So in this lesson, we have solved a different kind of percent problem. We have, instead of just calculating 10% you know, of 100 or 50% of 200, we turn it around and we ask ourselves, if you have two numbers here, what percentage of one, of one number is the other number? And so to do it, you have to set up a proportion. And we learned how to solve that here and we went through it. I really need you to practice it. This is a skill that's very important that we'll use later. I want you to practice all of these and then follow me on to part two where we, we will continue building your skills.